The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. In March of 1776, Abigail Adam penned these words to her husband, John. I desire you would remember the ladies and be even more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Do not put such unlimited power in the hands of husbands. Remember, all men would be tyrants if they could. In the 1800s, the women's suffrage movement began. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, 1848. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women were created equal. In entering upon the great work before us, we anticipate no small amount of misconception, misrepresentation, and ridicule. But we shall use every instrumentality within our power to effect our objective. In 1878, a woman's suffrage amendment was introduced. In 1896, the National Association of Colored Women was founded. This is a sample of some of the black suffragists that were active during that time. You can find more information on some of these women in the exhibit. In 1909, the Women's Equal Suffrage League of Virginia is established. This is a notice for a 1913 meeting in the Montrose Town Hall for a debate as to whether women should be able to vote under the same qualifications as men. In 1917, the National Women's Party picketed the White House. On June 4, 1919, Congress passed the 19th Amendment, with 24-year-old Harry Byrne following his mom's advice to be a good boy by casting the final vote for ratification. August 26, 1920, the Secretary of State proclaimed the 19th Amendment part of the Constitution. In 1952, Virginia finally ratified the 19th Amendment, 32 years after it became part of the Constitution. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 protected registration and voting for racial minorities. In 2006, the Voting Rights Act was extended for 25 years. This is a list of the polling places in Westmoreland County as of 1988, courtesy of the Registrar's Office. Here is an excerpt from the Northern Neck News in 1920. We hope our representatives at Richmond will not be misled by the signatures secured by the very busy and charming women who have paraded the court greens of late, expounding very attractively their articles of faith and securing the hasty endorsement of those who can refuse a pretty woman nothing. In October of 1920, both white and African-American women in Westmoreland County registered to vote. You can pause this part to read all the information. But there were 33 women from Colonial Beach, 9 from Copal District, 7 from Hague, 31 from Montrose, 2 from Washington District, and 1 from Cicada. These are photos of some of the women who registered to vote in Westmoreland County in October of 1920. A hundred years ago, women who had just earned the right to vote would have placed their ballot in this box.
Fashion in the 1920s. Cotton and wool were fabrics of the time, but silk was in high demand, and hemlines and hairlines were on the rise. This would have been a winter look for a woman in the 1920s. These cotton dresses are examples of what a rural woman in the 1920s would wear. This hat, shoes, and bag would have been worn by an upper-class lady in the 1920s. This purse opens to reveal a compact and also a spot for a dime and a penny, which is all the money a 1920s woman would need to carry around with her. This hat would have been worn by a middle-class lady in the 1920s. A beaded bag like this was all the rage. These 1920s boots might have seen a march or two in Richmond or Washington, D.C. This is another 1920s hat that a middle class lady would have worn. And off to the side is a beaded purse and a handkerchief that might have been accessories for her as well. If a 1920s lady was going out on the town in a major city, she might sample some of these looks. Some terms of the day include the bee's knees, putting on the ritz, Hotsy Totsy, and the cat's meow. These are some items you might have found on the farm. This is a day book from the Belfield store, Branson Cove in Coles Point. You can see the prices listed next to the items. Here are the costs of some of the items that people might have bought from the general store. This is the cost of a house, a car, or even a postage stamp in the 1920s. This is a 1920s oil lamp. Stayed with Blanche while others went to dance. Washed and hung up meat. Got store bill today. We have sold Papa $36.13 worth of eggs. Now we have a $5.22 credit. Went to Mrs. O's to get our chickens today. 139 hatched. Arthur had fine place in the dining room made for them.
This is a milk can. And this is a milking stool that would have been used on the farm. This is the kind of phone that would have been used in the 1920s, though it was quickly going out of fashion.